Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. So this puzzle was suggested by one of my viewers, uh, Quermak. Forgive me if I mispronounce your name, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, you know, you can see it in the comments and I'll include the link here as well uh, to that video, which the comment was written. Uh, and then I thought about this problem. It's a really good puzzle and um, he solved it using coordinate geometry. I'm going to solve it using a different method. Okay, for, so thanks for the suggestion. Let's go ahead and proceed. Now, we do have a unit circle that is uh, tangent to two of the legs. So it's not completely inscribed, but it's just tangent to two of the sides from inside. And this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle with height two. So the height of the triangle is two. And um, the circle is a unit circle, which means that its radius is one. And obviously, the circle and the hypotenuse intersect, and that forms a chord, and we're supposed to find the length of that chord there. Okay, cool. Let's see how we're going to proceed. Obviously, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so we're going to take advantage of that. This is a 90 degree angle here. This is a 30 degree angle here, and this is a 60 degree angle here. Okay? Awesome. Now, we got to find the length of the chord, so we're going to be using some properties of circles, but let's go ahead and make some connections first. I'd like to connect the center down below here. So that's going to make a perpendicular segment there. All right, cool. And we know that the radius is one. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a, one more connection, which is going to be something that is going to be perpendicular. So here's the idea. So if you have a chord of a circle and if you hit the midpoint from the center, then you're talking about a perpendicular segment, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is that if you go ahead and draw a perpendicular segment like this one, hopefully that's going to be as perpendicular as I want it to be. Okay, that looks good, I guess. So that segment, if that is perpendicular, if that's at 90 degree angle, then you're talking about a midpoint here. So it's just going to bisect the chord. Okay? That's one of the properties that we're going to use. And of course, this is the center of the circle. And if you go ahead and connect it to a point on the circle, that's also going to give you the radius of the circle. So this length is also one. Okay. Now these uh, connections are important. Why? Because we're going to use the properties of 30, 60, 90 triangles as well as uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, the 30, 60, 90 is also the Pythagorean theorem, whatever you want to call that, but anyways. So, so that's 30 degrees, so this should be a 60 degree angle. Great. Now, this is not a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. We don't know that. So, but what we know, the only thing we know about that right triangle, and let me go ahead and shade it for you, which triangle I'm talking about. So in this right triangle, it's not a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but one thing we know about that triangle is that its hypotenuse is equal to one, okay? So we don't know the legs, but uh, one of the legs happens to be half of the chord. So if you can find that length, which seems to be the base of the triangle, if you kind of turn it back upside down, whatever, uh, and the height is kind of shorter. Uh, so if you can find that length, we can double it and find the length of the chord. Great. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this A and let's call this length B. So my goal is to find 2B and I got to make this joke again. Forgive me for that, but... 2B or not 2B. Okay, in this case, it's 2B because we're gonna find 2B. Nice. So how do we go about finding it, right? That's a good question. That's a million dollar question. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to use two things here. First, we're gonna use this 30, 60, 90 triangle. Did I say 30, 60, 90? Yes, because this is a 30 degree angle and that's a 60 degree angle. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle and I know one of the lengths, which is good. The, one of the things I'm gonna use is that one. Second, I'm going to use the shaded, uh, blue shaded triangle, which is the AB1 triangle. Okay, so let's see how we can go or where we go from here. Okay, so since the um, longer leg of this triangle is one, the shorter leg can be found by dividing it by square root of three. You know that the longer leg in a 30, 69 triangle is square root of three times the shorter leg, right? So this length here is going to be 1 divided by root 3, which is root 3 over 3. 
Okay? All right, cool. That's my base. I know the height, I know the base, and you know, the hypotenuse is twice the shorter leg, so this length right here is just gonna be two root three over three, and we need all these lengths. Cool. Now, the second relationship that I'd like to talk about is this one. First of all, notice that this point is on the circle as well as on the base of this right triangle. And the radius of the circle is one. So if you draw a segment from here, another point of tangency to the center, this should give you the radius, which is one. This is one, this is one, and this is also one. Okay, the whole thing. Why? Because you get a square there, right? You see the square? Cool, okay. Now, why did I use that? Because now I'm gonna use that to find the length of this piece. But to find the length of that piece, I'm gonna need some other length. What do we know? Well, I need to know the base of this big, gigantic 30, 60, 90 triangle. But I know that, how? Well, I know that the height is two, right? So if the shorter leg is two, then the longer leg is going to be two root three, right? So this whole thing here is two root three. Great. The writing is in the way, but I hope you don't mind. Uh, you can still hopefully see what I'm talking about, right? Between these two points is two root three. If you subtract one from it, which is the radius of the circle right here, you end up with this piece, which happens to be two root three minus one. So that's the length that I need to use. Why? Because I'm going to use this gigantic triangle now and notice, okay, and this gigantic triangle, what, well, not the most gigantic one, but the bigger one, okay? It's this one. So I'm gonna use that right triangle, how? Well, I can calculate the base because I know that this is root three over three, this piece, and this part is two root three minus one. So let's go ahead and write that down. Root three over three plus two root three minus one happens to be the base of this triangle okay, whose base is given like this, okay? You see the dots? I made them bigger. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse. Can I find the shorter leg from the hypotenuse, which happens to be between these two points? Absolutely, because as you know, in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the shorter leg is half of the hypotenuse. So if you cut this in half, you're gonna get the shorter leg. So let's go ahead and multiply this expression, whatever that is, we don't care at this point, multiply by one half, and that should give me what? Two root three over three plus A. You see that? Because that's the shorter leg of the triangle that I just shaded. Okay, cool. So this is equal to two root three over three plus A. So my goal here is to find A. How am I gonna use the value of A? I'll tell you in a little bit, so stay tuned, okay? But maybe you already guessed because I told you that I was gonna use the blue shaded triangle as well. Yes, you guessed it right. If you guessed it right, it should be the Pythagorean theorem. Great, so let's go ahead and simplify this and I wanna find the value of A. Okay, how do you multiply this by one half? I would probably make a common denominator inside the parentheses first because it makes sense. And that would look like square root of three plus, if you multiply everything by three, six root three minus three divided by three, of course. And then this should give you a plus two root three over three. Great. What am I gonna do next? Well, I'm gonna combine like terms. These two are like terms. So that gives me seven root three minus three divided by two divided by three. So that means divided by six because two times three equals six. And I'm trying to find the value of a, so why can't I just go ahead and subtract this number, two root three over three, and that's gonna give me the value of a, right? Now at this point, obviously, we do need to make a common denominator, and that would be six, so let's go ahead and multiply the three by two, times two here and times two here. So that should give me seven root three minus three minus four root three, all over six is equal to a, okay. Now, this is my a value, but let's simplify one more time. And that should be three root three minus three over six. Did I say one more time? I meant twice. So let's do one more time. And that should be root three minus one over two. Beautiful. That's my a value. Now, why do I need the a value? 
because I do have a right triangle whose height is A and whose base is 1 and whose hypotenuse is 1. So I'm talking about this triangle here. Let's use that one. So that triangle looks like this, right? This is A, this is B, and this is 1. And remember, B is half of the chord. So when I double it, I'm going to get the length that I'm looking for. So 2B is the answer. Not 2B, 2B. Okay. Anyways. So what do we do? Well, we use the Pythagorean theorem, as I said earlier, right? So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem, which looks like A squared plus B squared is equal to 1. And we know that A is equal to root 3 minus 1 over 2. So that quantity will be squared. And then B squared will be added and it's going to equal 1. So to find B squared, I got to simplify this. So I need to subtract this expression from 1. 1 minus this expression squared. How do you square that expression? Well, we're just going to square the top and the bottom and divide. So to, if you're trying to square a fraction or a quotient, then you square the numerator and the denominator and take the quotient. Cool. That's going to look like what now? This is something like a minus b. If you square a minus b, you get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. From a squared plus b squared, you get 4, because root 3 squared is 3. 3 plus 1 equals 4, minus 2ab is going to give you 2 root 3. Don't forget to square the 2. Sometimes I do, and that's going to be a 4. Now, of course, we need to make a common denominator or multiply both sides by 4. Uh, actually, that might be a good idea. Yeah, I just thought about it right now. It just occurred to me. Why don't we multiply both sides by 4? And I'll tell you why in a little bit. So this is going to become 4, and this is going to be just, you know, denominators, right? Cool. Now, what's re really cool about this is that, I'll tell you. Okay, just hang in there. So 4 minus 4 is 0. That's nice. And they cancel out, and we end up with 2 or 3. So now, at this point, don't divide both sides by 4. You don't need to. Why? Because we're looking for 2b, right? Not 2b. We're looking for 2b. So if you just square root both sides, you get the answer. So the length, and isn't that awesome? Length of the chord we're looking for is 2b, and it's going to be the square root of 2 root 3. And you can simplify it, like write the 2 as uh, 2 to the power 1 half, square root of 2, then times 3 to the power 1 fourth, so on and so forth. You, you can do lots of different manipulations, but I'm going to leave it at that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and also check out the membership option. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.